Hello, salutations. What to do is stop the game or all father do rag gang. You know the vibes like the scrub. Let's get it. So last month we finally got confirmation that the next playable hero coming to Marvel's Avengers was Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, which had been predicted a month before that by a local fortune teller who was actually just kind of good at guessing. But instead of Winter Soldier being released with the new villain sector this Tuesday, he will instead be coming out later this year alongside a new piece of in-game content called Cloning Labs, a mission designed for high-level players that appears as if it will be the end of the AIM storyline. But this strategy presents a big problem that I will be breaking down in this video. Although before we start, if you enjoy these videos where I discuss the game, hit the like button or subscribe to the channel for the YouTube algorithm. It's totally free and takes you just a split second. And as a thank you for doing this, here's a picture of Doctor Strange. Thank you all so much. Now, one of the consistent and biggest complaints with Marvel's Avengers has been the relative lack of content, specifically with replayability. Even though many players request new heroes in a focus on story, the numbers show that players would come to the game for all that and then leave shortly after finishing, which is fine for a single player game with paid DLC like Insomniac Spider-Man game, but not for a live service multiplayer looter with weekly marketplace items to sell that also doesn't charge for any of its DLC content. So while this year has been very light on actual content, we've seen the developers instead focus on making the game more new player friendly and adding loops to make players want to stay on the game longer and farm for gear and levels. One problem though is that the end game content currently in the game, the OLT and the raid, are not considered fun by many players in no small part because of bugs and connection issues. This actually creates two very large problems for the Winter Soldier DLC. First off is the power level requirement. According to the developers, cloning labs will come with an increase to the power level cap, which currently is 175. 175 is also the requirement to even enter cloning labs. This was a controversial decision, not just because a lot of players haven't reached 175, but because as the game is now, it would actually be impossible to take Winter Soldier through cloning labs the first day, Unless of course you simply cheat. This wasn't an issue with the Spider-Man DLC because even though he didn't come with his own story missions, you could still at least take him through the new raid on the first day since you only had to be power level 150 to play the normal version. As far as we've been told, there is no version of cloning labs that will let you play if your power level is below 175. So when you get Winter Soldier, if you wanna take him through the new story content, you will only be able to play the new villain sector coming with patch 2.6, which is weird considering cloning labs directly involves Bucky in the story. Otherwise, you'll be leveling up your Winter Soldier using the same content you did with Jane Foster, which is the same content you had with Spider-Man last year. I personally think it's a huge mistake if the developers decide to keep things as they are and force you to spend nearly two months leveling up Bucky just to take him through cloning labs, especially if they plan on raising the power level cap anyway. If you're going to raise the cap to let's say 200, what's the harm adding more ways to increase your power level by adding superior exotics to more missions, or at the very least, getting rid of all the time gating temporarily so that players who want to grind can hit power level 175 in a single day by playing the raid and OLT repeatedly until they hit 175. You can make it, let's say a four day event and cap the rewards so you can't get higher than 175 during the promotion and then put things back to normal for the grind to 200. They could even bring back the three event stack during this time so players will have access to the Tachyon Anomaly, Cosmic Threat, and Corruptive Vibranium at the same time like they did for the second anniversary celebration to get a quick boost before grinding the OLT and raid. That way you're giving players a chance to hit 175 the first week to play Bucky with cloning labs. But at the same time, you're making sure only the most serious players are actually going to do it. Since the developers are concerned making power leveling too easy will make it more likely that you'll be paired with unskilled players when matchmaking in-game content. But that also brings up the other problem. The biggest reason people don't like the raid is because it's often a waste of time. Not only are the rewards bad after your first completion, there is a high chance you won't even be able to finish it due to crashing. This would be solved by adding join in progress. According to Miller, it's currently in testing, but will it actually make it in time for cloning labs? And if not, will cloning labs have the same problem as the raid? The main reason cloning labs has taken so long to come out is because there were major stability concerns. They still haven't fixed that issue with the raid, so the only way to ensure people will be able to make it through cloning labs is to introduce join in progress so that if you do get disconnected from the mission, you can just join back in where you left off. But if it's not ready and cloning labs does prove to be unstable, then players will quickly find themselves in a familiar situation of having a new hero 
and nothing new to do with them. Let me know in the comments what you think should be done about Winter Soldier and Coney Labs. And if you're struggling to reach power level 150 or 175, check out this next video. Oh.